Hi, I'm Callie and welcome to Kapowski Reads and Vlogmas. This is my first proper Vlogmas video because the last one was just an introduction to my intent and this is me actually doing it. So I am still in Peebles, I'm still staying with my parents and in my very very Christmassy bedroom with Fred. <laughs> have a plan for today which is that I'm going to go into town with my mum we're gonna do some shopping and I have heard that Peebles has got some new bookshops so I'm going to go to them I don't know if I'm going to buy anything but come on come on I'm probably going to I'm so excited to go into town because I haven't been here since November 2019 before you know the whole thing happened and I'm just really excited to see how it's changed because it's such a small town that there are often some notable changes and I'm just I'm so excited I'm so so excited and I mean I'm also just excited to see how gorgeous the town is and we're going for lunch and we are going to go to Ramblers which is somewhere that I used to go to quite a lot with my mom with my sister and my stepdad and it's somewhere that I've never had a disappointing meal there. Everything's always just so tasty and just massive portions. So I'm very excited to see if it's still as marvellous as I remember. Um, and I'm bringing my appetite. So I feel like I've got a good day ahead of me. Yeah, I'll report back later. And let's be honest, I'll probably have a little bit call because can't be stopped. <laughs> I had the most fun day shopping in the high street in Peebles. I went to, not just the high street, I went to the high street and I went to Northgate which will mean nothing to you unless you're familiar with the town but basically that's just the street off of the main street and I visited all three bookshops and I have a little haul because I <laughs> Clearly I cannot be stopped, uh, but I did, I feel I showed some restraint and I'm really proud of myself for that. I, there is one book I do want to go back and get at a later date because, well I should have bought it at the time and I didn't and I regret it. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to get it. And that's just a book about the history of the town because I, in my bureau, I will have shown, hopefully, uh, a mural which is a gorgeous gorgeous mural of the history of the town and there's a book which is also about the history of the town and I think that it would be really interesting to read that and to just actually know the real history of the place where I'm from because I know a lot of history but there's a very strong chance that lots of it's just made up from you know folk stories passed down the ages. I don't know how much of it is true. So that's something I would like to learn a little bit more about. So on to the haul. I also bought a load of Christmas decorations but they're all packed up in bubble wrap so I will show them to you later. Probably when I'm back up in Aberdeen because I want them to be nice and safely secured so that they don't break. I don't want to break my decorations that I don't have space for. So on to the haul. So the first stop I made was to Witties, which was the only bookshop that I actually had previously been to. It's a family business and it's been going the entire time that I can remember. It's just moved location and it's still down a vinyl, which is just so exciting. So even just going there is fun and it sells new books, but there were no new books that I really just wanted. I kind of limited myself to books that I just really really wanted because otherwise I was going to be coming home 
with way more books than I can carry. So I went to Prize for Books next, which sells secondhand books and a few new books, including the history book that I will go back and get because I should have bought it at the time. I only ended up buying two books. And first one was The Grace Keepers by Kirsty Logan. I have previously read and just loved this book, but it was a library book and I didn't have my own copy and I wanted my own copy and now I have it. I also got Taken at the Flood by Agatha Christie because I'm building my Agatha Christie collection, but with the exception of the hardbacks, I'm kind of making up my Agatha Christie library with secondhand copies because there's a lot of books and it's quite expensive. So I like getting secondhand copies and I don't have my own copy of this one, but now I do. I also went to Peebles Comics and Games, which is an amazing just treasure trove of all things kind of geeky, which I know I would have absolutely loved had that place been open while I lived here because it was just so full of comic books and it even had a Warhammer section. So that's something to remember for next time because I enjoy painting. And I picked up four books, but some of them were gifts because tis the season. I wanted to get some comic books for my stepkids. So I got these two. Hopefully my stepkids are gonna love them and if they don't I would quite like to read them. So I have these two comics. When I was buying my other things I was recommended this one which is a sort of ultimate tale of good and evil and I'm very into that and I could pretend that this one is also gonna be a gift but it's not. I'm gonna read this and then put it on the kids shelf but I will be the one reading this. <laughs> I'm very excited about it. And the final book that I bought for myself was Mooncakes by Wendy Zoo and Suzanne Walker. And I wanted to buy this in time to read it in October because it's just so Halloween-y. But I didn't buy it mainly because I couldn't find a copy in my local bookshop. And I came all the way to the borders and now I have one. And this is just a charming, charming little story about a werewolf and a witch. I'm in. I'm in. It was an extremely, extremely productive day. I had so much fun. We went just a little walk around the town, went, did some shopping, had some lunch, and I am still full from my lunch. And that was five hours ago. I'm still full. It was so good. But this evening's plans are going to revolve around starting my December reading. And the movie prompt that I'm going to be focusing on first is White Christmas, a book with snow on the cover, because the first book I'm going to be picking up is The Witch and the Tsar by Olesia Selknikova Gilmore. And this is a, basically, I believe this is a Baba Yaga retelling which I'm, I'm in, I'm in. The second any book tells me it's a retelling of something fairy tale-ish, I'm in. And I also really like the story of Baba Yaga and I, I couldn't resist, could not resist getting this book. And it's got snow on the cover and it just looks so wintry and lovely. And I'm really excited to read it. I'm not super duper sure what else the book is about, but I will find out and I will report back. I am back. Literally, I am back home now. I spent the day travelling. I left Peebles at 9.45 and arrived back at Aberdeen at 5 minutes to 2, which is really good timing. But I'm knackered. For for a journey where I did nothing, I just sat and read. It was pretty exhausting. I do find traveling pretty tiring, but it gave me loads of time to read and I've made some pretty good progress. So last night I did start reading The Witch and the Tsar. My throat's really sore because the air is really cold, uh, but I have a tea advent calendar that my mom gave me 
and today's tea is my favourite, I think it's my favourite of the Pucker teas. So we've peaked already on day two and it's mint refresh because I am a 90 year old lady at heart and I love mint and rose. So I did start reading The Witch and the Tsar last night and I made a little bit of progress and I planned to finish that bus on bus book on my return journey which involved a bus and a train and another bus <laughs> but something something excellent happened so in my TBR video I mentioned that I was really excited about some pre-orders that I had made and a book that didn't fit any of the TBR prompts but then it did and everything was great uh the author of one of my pre-orders well both of them got in touch with me and asked if I would like uh, an early copy of Raising the Alarm and I was like yes please so I actually received a copy of that book before it came out it's out tomorrow so I, I decided I had to read that I had to read that first because I was giddy with joy about it getting released so I read that for the first part of my journey and it was such a good choice to do that because it was such such a fun read it was a novella teeny tiny only i think about 50 pages that took up a decent part of my journey which also involved a lot of staring out of the window because it's a really nice route that my journey involves lots of countryside this book is by nikki bell and i'm fairly certain that this is her first work of fiction i have read her non-fiction book about the perils of dating before and that was so so funny so I was really looking forward to reading this book and it is a romance with dual perspective so would have fitted the prompt for love actually but oh well it's fine I have another book that I really want to read for that prompt this is a romance between Andy who is a police officer whose boyfriend has left her with a broken heart and Logan a pawnbroker with another broken heart oh what's gonna happen and these two characters are brought together when his alarm at the pawn shop goes off and alerts the police and logan then just makes a mission to woo andy and she is well she is actually interested but only inwardly outwardly she's like girl not interested this was an adorable story and i loved I loved the way that it had the dual perspective so you can sort of see what each character was thinking because otherwise I think some of the actions would be a little bit creepy if you didn't know that the other person was very much into it. I thought it was so sweet and just a ha guaranteed insta love happy ending. It was what I wanted. It wasn't a festive book but it just felt like it could be a Hallmark film and I think it should be. So if whoever deals with those sort of things could do that, that would be excellent. Um, I am willing to be cast as the police chief. I know it's a guy, but I could put on a beard or something. That would be amazing. It made me feel just warm and fuzzy. I thought Andy was just such a sympathetic character. What had happened to her was just rage inducing. And I just, my heart went out to her. I really felt sorry for her. And not that she would want my pity, but I just really thought that she was uh, just such a lovable character who was just trying to do the best that she could with the hand that she had been dealt. After all that she'd been through, I just, I just wanted her to get a break. And if that break included some <laughs> entertainment with Logan, then sure. I am now even more excited about receiving my pre-orders because I pre-ordered book one in the series and book two. So the second novella, is out I want to see next week again I rarely pay attention to the release dates the the books either arrive at my door or arrive on my kindle and it's it's a joyful surprise so <laughs> I will look forward to that I do feel I should apologize to anybody who was on any part of my journey and went to be reading this because I was giggling most of the way through the book it's just such a fun little charming romance and it was what my heart wanted. I then returned to The Witch and the Tsar, which I had made an all right amount of progress in before uh, yesterday, but I am now just under the 60% progress mark. 
those words in a different order will make sense. Um, I'm now about 60% of the way through the book there <laughs> and I'm very much in. I'm very much invested. This book is slightly different to what I was expecting or I didn't pay attention to the blurb. It could be either, it could be both. So what I didn't realise about this book was that it included not only Baba Yaga or an in character inspired by Baba Yaga, but that the king was Ivan the Terrible. I didn't realise that. I must have missed that on the blurb because it's it's on the blurb. I, I did. I did miss it. So that, I didn't realise that until shamefully far on in the book where somebody referred to King Ivan as the terrible and I then went oh yeah <laughs> so I'm the fool there and that just made this even more exciting because I didn't realize that it was inspired by real events so our protagonist basically she is a healer with some additional power she is half goddess and she basically lives a solitary life where people come to her when they are in need of aid. But other than that, she's sort of sworn off of living among the humans, the mortals, and waits for them to come to her in her house, which has the chicken legs. And I, I love her house. I think her house, her house, her wolf and her owl are my favourite characters. Not picked a favourite human character yet. <laughs> But one day uh, an old friend comes in need of aid and it's the Z Zarita? Z Zarita, the, the wife of the, the Tsar and Yaga ends up helping her and ends up going to the castle to, to basically help her friend who she cares a great deal for and lots of things happen. Lots of things happen. It escalates very quickly. I found this book to be quite a slow start but I think that as soon as I got to the, the castle it all started going really quickly and sort of snowballing and I feel like the momentum has carried me all the way to the 60% mark. There is a slow build romance that I am very much invested in. Again it's not the romance that I would have wanted but I'm okay with the romance that I'm getting and I'm finding this book really really exciting to read. There was a huge huge twist, a huge reveal at maybe 55% of this book and I first at first I felt a little bit smug because I was kind of like oh, I bet that this is going to be this and then literally on the next page it was confirmed so I didn't get a chance to be smug but I'm very excited about that reveal. Very cryptic but I don't want to ruin it for anyone so my plan for the next, the rest of today, actually the, my plan for the rest of the day is just to spend time with my partner and put up some of my Christmas decorations that I brought home because I don't know where they're going to go. My tree is full. Um, but my plan for tomorrow is to finish this book and I'm so excited and now that I'm home I will be able to share my advent calendars with you because I am a grown woman that has three advent calendars and I regret nothing. <laughs>my new Christmas decorations that I got back home onto the Christmas tree and our Christmas tree is full. There's, there is no space for any more decorations and yet I have my craft club next week and we will be swapping decorations so I will be coming home with 10 new decorations and no tree space. Um, that feels like that's a problem for me of the future so me of the now is just enjoying having an absolutely jam-packed tree. We have got a Christmas tree, just a little one, for the kids, for their room, so I'm wondering if maybe they may want to take some from the, the main, the family tree, and pop them onto their tree, and that will free up some space, but I, I don't see that happening, because our tree downstairs is very, um, it's full of decorations that are made with love or gifted with love. 
with the exception of the ones that I've just brought home, but I bought them with someone I love, so that totally counts. I have now finished prompt one for my December TBR, which was to read a book with snow on the cover in homage of the Christmas film White Christmas, which I will be watching later today. And the book that I finished was The Witch and the Tsar. And I actually think I forgot to say why I chose this book. The reason for that was because I was starting my December reading while I was staying with my parents and the only books that I had with me were on my Kindle. So I just went to my Kindle and knew that I had books for all of the other prompts up here. So I had a look to see what books I had with snow on the cover and lo, there was The Witch and the Tsar and that is exactly how I chose that. <laughs> did I love The Witch and the Tsar? No. But did I like it? Very much so. I think it's safe to say that I maybe loved about 60% of this book, liked 20% and felt nothing really towards another 20% because there did feel like there were some parts that seemed to be filler. But I don't, that might not even be the case. It might just be that you can't just go from exciting event to exciting event. And sometimes our heroes need time to rest and just have a home life. I'm not opposed to having domestic life included in fantasy books. I, I do enjoy it. I like sort of seeing what the heroes are like when they've got downtime. But it just felt like the sort of domestic life in this book took up almost too much of the book where it just felt like it slowed the pace down a little bit. I do have to say that I'm very pleasantly surprised to find out that this book included some spice and I was not expecting there to be any spice because there were a lot of times where the scene would fade to black, not, not necessarily during a romantic time but during you know some plot where something was being explained. It would fade to black and then suddenly ah we're now on to the next thing. So I just assumed that the sexy times were going to go like that as well. But no, no, um, they did eventually fade to black, but we got, we, we got to read some action and that was unexpected. And I, and I found myself chuckling. So, <laughs> so that was fun. I did really enjoy the character of Yaga during the first and second acts of this book. And then there was a point where I feel her character really changed and almost became a little bit passive. And then she got back to the Yaga that I had grown to love. I feel like by having the king in this book be Ivan the Terrible, who, while I wasn't sure of the time that he reigned, I definitely knew who he was. I feel like that just really amped up the, the danger, the risks of the sort of rebellious nature of Yaga and her little band of rebels. I I think that made it feel really tense because I just, I didn't know who who was going to make it and I wanted to find out and I wanted to keep reading because I, I had grown to care about like pretty much all of the characters and I wanted, I wanted to know who, who made it in the end. So I really felt like this was quite compelling because I didn't want to put it down. I happily finished this book and I just wish that, oh, I wish that the, there was more of the exciting parts because I feel like sort of the battles and the confrontations could have maybe been a little bit longer, but that's just me being greedy and wanting more. I want more of the exciting parts. But I think if I was to be honest with myself, they, the pacing was absolutely fine. I think I definitely just wanted, I loved the exciting parts so much that I just wanted more of them. But then that would be a very nonsensical book that just went excitement, excitement, excitement. You need something in between to break it up. And I, I appreciate that. I just wanted more. I love, I love a fairy tale retelling, a myth retelling. I, it is my, my secret weakness, which isn't secret at all. I really enjoyed the fantasy world in this, even though it wasn't so much a fantasy world. It was a real world. It was just in the days of yore. And I, I just, I loved, loved all of the sort of mythology and 
fairy tale elements mixed together and I got to learn about all of these gods that I hadn't known about and I want to find out more about because again my secret weakness is reading books based on mythology any form of mythology so I will definitely be looking for more books that feature the gods mentioned in this book I feel it's just going to send me down a rabbit hole and I'm happy to go down that rabbit hole I absolutely love love loved the characters of her sort of sidekicks which were an owl and a wolf they could talk she could converse with them and give them instructions and I just love them I love the way that the wolf and the owl were like her family which then she had more of a found family and again secret weakness I love that in books so I had a great time reading this book I really enjoyed it what should I read next as you might be able to see if you're a keen bean I have a new book in this pile which is the TBR for December which I hadn't previously mentioned and it's Blackwater Sister by Zencho right here because I thought I could read that for the supernatural prompt for Scrooged in addition to A Christmas Carol if time allows I don't know my TBR is far too big and I know that so <laughs> let's just accept I'm not sure what I'm gonna read next I might tie it into which Christmas film I fancy watching after A White Christmas. So it may be up to, we have the kids this weekend, so it might be up to them to decide. That feels risky. <laughs> Wish me luck. Thanks for watching. Bye.